Hello everybody and welcome to your second chapter in your Java U7 tutorial series. Let's get you started in what you'll need in the coming chapters. So first of all, let's go over the required software. So what you need is the Java Platform Standard Edition, Java EE 7 Software Development Kit, and the NetBeans IDE. So your Java Platform Standard Edition is gonna be the thing that's gonna be your baseline, the stuff that you may have already have downloaded, but let's just make sure that you actually have it for now. So first of all, let's go into our Java 8. Go ahead and click the link in the description below. And uh, you can go ahead into your Java SE. So what I want you to focus on is our Java SE 8 U231. So this version will probably be much uh, higher when you see this video, but um, all you gotta do is go ahead, click the download button and follow the instruction uh, installation instructions over here. And if you go into your installation instructions, let me just uh, walk you through it. Just click Microsoft Windows and click JDK installation for Microsoft Windows. Once you click that, you can see all your system requirements, installation instructions, and um, let's say like stuff that like, for example, insul uh, install like direction tree and all that. Okay, so let's go ahead and click this download link. And what you got to do is you got to accept your license agreement and click on the version which uh, you may want. Let's say if you are, uh, you're on a Mac, you go ahead and click this link. But I'm a, on a Windows and mine is a 64-bit, so I go ahead and click this um, uh, this Java, this JDK.exe, and it will start downloading immediately. Okay, so once your Java is downloaded, let's go to our C drive and go to our Java, so program files, Java and JDK. So let's just copy this link over here. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create environment variables. So environment variables are basically stuff that Java uses to figure out where your Java stuff is kept. So what you wanna do is you wanna create something called Java home and paste your uh, file, your um, stuff over here. So go ahead, click new, put in Java uh, home, and paste your link right over there and click OK. Since I already have it, um, I'm not going to do that and go into your path um, variable over here. So what you will find here is that there is one called, there's something called percent Java home percent bin uh, semicolon. So what this does is it tells Java to go to this Java home, which you have applied over here. And it tells Java to go into the bin folder, which you have specified over here. And it just tells Java to go inside this bin where all the stuff is kept. So now that you got that, let's go ahead and download our Java EE. So what you will see is our downloads, Glassfish and Java EE 8. And I know where you're thinking, hey, I thought this was a Java EE 7 tutorial. It is, relax. We're just going to be using Java EE since it's the most recent version and it will work with all our stuff in Java EE 7. So go ahead and click this link and download your Java EE SDK. Okay, so a little bit of a forewarning. Our default username when you download Java EE is going to be, our username is going to be admin with no password. And the admin port is set to the default 4848, while the HTTP port is set to the default 8080. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and set our path. Okay, one more thing that we wanna make sure that you wanna do, go into your Java EE folder and copy, so copy this Glassfish 5 folder and go to your C drive and paste it right over here. This will make our pathfinding much easier later on. Okay, so you know the drill, let's go ahead and create our environment variables. So once again, I'm trying to tell you that these environment variables are made because we want to make sure that your Java EE knows exactly where your Java EE stuff is kept. So what you want to do is go ahead, click new, and create these variables. So you want to create one called as install and do the C drive, Glassfish 5 and Glassfish and as install parent, 
which is C and Glassfish 5. What this is, is your actual Glassfish server. And this is a directory, basically the parent folder of your Glassfish server. This, these two are used for when you're, um, you know, coding in your, um, like Java EE and do the exact same thing down here. And then you can go right ahead to your path variable. What you will find over here is if I scroll all the way to the, uh, all the way down. And if I try to find it you will see oh over here so we got a percent as install parent slash bin semicolon percent as install slash bin semicolon so these two are just telling your java ee to check here for your um your uh glassfish server um parent and here for your actual glassfish server so now that you got that done let's go ahead to our netbeans all right, so we have one last step to do. Let's download our Apache NetBeans. Once again, the link is in the description. So let's go ahead and download our newest version of Java or uh, Apache NetBeans. Go ahead and click find more and click download. And it's that easy. You got your NetBeans down and your IDE is ready to go. Uh, the reason why I picked NetBeans actually is because I find it much easier on beginners. You can use your IDE of choice like Eclipse, but you may need to tweak your files a little bit. My preference, just use Apache NetBeans. One thing that you want to make sure that you don't do is don't install the version of Glassfish server that comes with NetBeans IDE. And also make sure to select the JUnit library. Um, we'll be using it in the later tutorials. And so the reason that we're not installing the version of Glassfish server that comes with NetBeans is because we already have Glassfish server downloaded. There's no need to download another set of Glassfish server. Okay, so once you pop up into NetBeans, you will see two tabs, either the services tag and the projects tag. So the first thing you want to see is you want to go to your servers in your services tag, open that up, and you, all you got to do is click add server. What this will do is you can now add your Glassfish server now. So go ahead and click that. Click next. Browse your location. So mine is in my C drive. And click what kind of server you would like with the recent version. And click I have read and accepted the license. And make sure you don't click this download now button. Because once again, like I said, we already have our Glassfish server or already here. And we're just telling um, our NetBeans to go to this Glassfish server. So then click next. And um, make sure that you have domain one. So that's the domain we'll be using for our tutorial. And uh, if you want, you can have more uh, domains later on. But for this tutorial, we'll be having domain one. So now that you have a Glassfish server up here, let's go ahead and show you how to start it. So go right ahead, right click and click start. And your Glassfish server will start running. And now I'll show you how to stop it. Right click and go ahead and click stop. And that will stop your Glassfish server. One more thing about Glassfish server is if you right click and um, start your Glassfish server. So start it up. And if you go to your Glassfish server, you can see that there is a view domain admin console. You will have your admin console. So in this admin console, you will find everything there is to have about Glassfish server. One thing that you might be surprised to learn about is your Glassfish server comes with a database. So you will find something called Java DB. Now this starts whenever your Glassfish server starts, but sometimes it may be manually turned off. So to start it, all you got to do is click start server and your database will start running. And again, to close it, you can go ahead and click this stop server whenever you need. Now, sometimes when you're running your Glassfish server, you may be wondering, what is this output log over here? What's this telling me? So basically what happens is whatever is going on in your server, everything will be outputted into this log where you can check if stuff, something may go wrong. So to go to that, all you got to do is right click and view domain server log, and you can see your log over here. Now, sometimes logging and stuff may not um, work all the time. So uh, you may want to start debugging instead. So this is where the Java platform debugger architecture comes in. All you got to do is right click, go to your admin console. All you got to do is go to your configurations, your server config, 
your JVM settings. And right here, you will find this little box. Make sure that you make sure that's checked up because this is telling our server to start the server in a debug mode, ready for the JPDA based debugger. So once you got that, go ahead and click save up here. And you can now um, debug your uh, NetBeans IDE. And with that, I will leave you to it. So now you have everything you need to go on with every single tutorial that you'll see in the later on tutorials. Once again, if you have any problems, just put it down in the description below and I will help you out. So now that you got everything set up and running, let's go straight ahead into our Java EE.